Today on Faith Matters, we are going to be hearing from Dan Kopp talk about creativity and a helpful and good use of tech. Dan has used it very well to shepherd and disciple his growth group. My name is Dan Jarms. And I'm Seth Weber. And Faith Matters, what we do is we talk about matters of the Christian faith. We also talk about matters pertaining to Faith Bible Church. Today, we are going to be uh, hearing an interview that I did with Dan Kopp a little while back as he used technology uh, to overcome a lot of obstacles in uh, in shepherding and caring for people through the pandemic. And since we still have surges and a variety of things going on, we're going to still need to be creative with our use of technology to keep our relationships going. So um, hearing from Dan is going to hopefully spark you with some good ideas and give you some inspiration to how to creatively care for people. As we think about the great call to make disciples. We, we say we're a loving community making disciples of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. I think of a handful of verses, Seth, that drive me. The Great Commission, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, yeah. is to go there for. But another really key one is in Colossians 1, where the Apostle Paul talks about proclaiming Christ and presenting everyone complete in Christ. Oh, yeah. And he he says it in a, in a way that... Um, I watched Dan Kopp carry out mm. where he, he says to this end, he says, for this, I toil struggling with all his energy that he powerfully works within me. When a person like Dan has a passion to see people complete in Christ, he's going to be creative mm-hmm. because he just can't stop wanting people to grow. So it's, it's a really great text, you know, Colossians 1, 28, 29 is thinking about it and Dan's carrying it out. So I look forward to hearing him. Let's jump into that interview. Dan, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. We are here today. We want to talk about using tech for good in discipleship. And Dan is one of our faithful growth group shepherds. The reason why I asked Dan to come uh, today is uh, I've watched how he has used tech in a really good way to be a faithful shepherd. We just come through, we're, we're still working through a really tough pandemic, lots of sickness, lots of legitimate concern about that. And Dan was really committed to creative ways to do discipleship through tech. So that's that's why you're here, Dan. And I just want to tell you, I appreciate your ministry. What drives you as a shepherd when you think of caring for people? Uh, what, what verses come to mind? What motivates you as a shepherd? Well, all of Psalm chapter one really comes into play for me. Um, it's It's been a, a real inspirational chapter in, in my life. And um, just talking about the person who meditates on God's word being like a tree that's planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in season and its leaf does not wither and all he does, he prospers. And, you know, that, that's something that, that the word of God is powerful and it needs to be proclaimed. And i um, doing that in a, a small group ministry is, um, is real, really a driver. And then not just learning about it, but by going and putting it into action. Yeah. That's, that's Dan and Emily's heart when they are, when I think of, of our faithful shepherds to see people grow. But we had, we had a barrier, a huge one, you know, overtakes us all with a pandemic and a shutdown. And Dan, you have a group that's got some, some serious health uh, concerns and, you know, they're, they are, they're, they still want to meet, but they would feel like, boy, I, I'm not really able to do the big gathering yeah, either directly or family members, so indirectly. Yeah, they have a personal risk factor or they have responsibilities. Mm-hmm. And so tough situations require creativity. And you and Emily have been creative with uh, using using tech. And there's real concerns and real barriers, but we can't just opt out of discipleship and Christian growth and encouragement. We still need each other. Then I think of the Colossians 3.16, speaking the word of Christ to one another. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, and those kinds of things. So those come to mind about why why we want to be creative 
Uh, so Dan, tell me the story of the last year and a half as you've sought to be a faithful growth group leader. Um, how did you guys keep meeting? What did you use to keep meeting? And uh, what kind of things did you have to adjust on the way? And, and how did your people deal with all that? We needed a, a way to meet together because we didn't want to be disobedient to the scriptures. We also see the the power of of fellowship and we were exploring different options. I think we started with Skype. Everybody had that. Everybody had Skype, yeah. yeah. And so we we tried that at first and um, we're, we're having some problems getting it to work. I don't even remember what they all were specifically, but uh, but we transitioned to Zoom and, and just had a, a better experience across the different types of devices and uh, internet connections and that sort of thing that people had. Zoom was just the one that, that everybody kind of landed on and that's where we've been ever since. How did the group respond to that? I think it was somewhat awkward at first because everybody's trying to learn the technology. You're distracted by the fact that people all over the world are dying. There's a lot of uncertainty. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like how long is this going to be a thing? Yeah. And we just kind of took it in stride and we're like, you know, I, I think we're just going to have to get used to this as a way of life, at least for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. And so we just kind of settled in and did it. Yeah. And there really wasn't much more to it than that. <laughs> so we had to finish out a year going through the growth group curriculum, but that group still wanted the, to meet. They wanted the spiritual connection. So they picked up uh, Piper Seeding and Savoring Jesus Christ. You went through that a summer ago. Yeah, we did. Yeah, which is a brilliant book. I mean, a, that was a, great. a brilliant call as a shepherd to just constantly keep everybody looking at Jesus instead of all the pan pandemic news. Mm -hmm. Let's keep looking at Jesus. Let's not focus on the pandemic news. We needed it. It was just, you could feel the heaviness uh, in people because, you know, there there was the uncertainty. There was the the death. There was, um, you know, just so many, I mean, you remember 2020 was just not yeah, a great year. Right. And uh, <laughs> for so many different reasons and people were just really feeling it. And and we needed we needed to just put our eyes on Jesus. And the great thing about going through a book like that is, if people need to be on vacation, that happens during summer, I'm told, um, <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, then you know, people could duck out and miss a, a meeting and they miss discussing a chapter. It's not the same as when you're doing an expository, you know, study through a yeah. book and you miss a section and, and all the people's input on it. That's, that's harder to miss than yeah. missing a couple chapters in a, a book by a, a modern author. You kept them looking at Jesus and they, we, we came in on one of those and, joined one of those studies last summer. It was so encouraging to see how everybody was interacting with each other. You know, one of the things that we didn't want to have was the void of summer that, that comes in. And because of that heaviness, we, we, we knew that, like we always need fellowship, but we really needed fellowship that mm -hmm. summer. Mm -hmm. And we didn't want to, um, to not have fellowship. We really, we really wanted to have it. And so that's why, why we did it. And it worked out you know, as, as you said, it worked out really well yeah. and we really enjoyed the study and, um, and, you know, people grew It it was a little bit less formal of a time too. So we got to, you know, there's, there's probably more chit chat before and after than, than we would generally have during a, a regular meeting. Yeah. You handed, handed out coffee and donuts through the, through the screens and right. Yeah. I wish Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we had virtual donuts. Um, they don't taste as good. No, 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 they don't. Uh, yeah, that's that's really good. So what have been the biggest blessings then? So you look back at the year and I look at your group. Um, what have been the biggest blessings of the year or biggest surprises? When you look at tough times, they can kind of, they tend to do one of two things. They either drive people apart or they draw people together. Mm. And in this case, it's been a real drawing people together as we've gone through this, um, you know, this whole pandemic situation. That's been a real big a big blessing for for us. We've we've seen a lot of um, we've seen a lot of, of real relationship building, which is, is just ironic. You would you would not think that you'd have that kind of relationship building when you're forced to be apart. But people have really been open, and I I don't think that's a product of the tech. I think it's the the tech has been a facilitator, like it's been the medium for that because we haven't been able to be together in person. Yeah. But it, there's an aspect of people's hearts wanting to um, to grow as well, and and the tech's not going to help with that. So, right, it's just a medium. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is a medium. 
we had a gal in our group join with a family member during Zoom, you know, where we're always on Zoom. And I think that made it easier for that family member to enter and, and sit in it at first. You know, it wasn't 25 people to get used to in person. Um, and then as that relationship continued to build, it developed personally. And when everybody was able to move back to in-person meetings, she joined right in. Like she had a really good introduction because it was a, and that's a surprise thing. Like, is, is that because of the tech? I don't know, but God's doing, God's doing those things. And it's, uh, it's really cool. I think one of the barriers is the fatigue of just not being able to be present with somebody. Mm-hmm. I just, I just feel like I want to be present. Yeah. And I don't want to do this unless I can be with a person. How have you helped people stay connected, even though they feel that way? We got together in person. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because there is no substitute, literally. Yeah. We, we, yeah. we just made a point to, um, to try to meet. And, and what that looks like is um, we will have one-on-ones with people or, or just small gatherings where a couple of people get together. It could be, um, you know, the, the people in our group with kids meet up at the park and, yeah. um, you know, the kids play and they talk for a little bit, or it could be going on a walk with somebody or, yeah. and then we've also done some activities over the summer where I had the group over to my place a couple of times where we did a, a barbecue and just hung out as a, as a group because the numbers were, were lower at that point And the outside risk is, is pretty low. And so we were, and, and most of us were vaccinated anyway. So it was not a, yeah. we didn't, we, we felt like the, the, the rewards were greater than the, the risks at that point. So, yeah. um, so th- that's what we do. We just make a point of how can we supplement our regular meetings where we're doing those over zoom with some time together with people so that we still get that personal interaction because mm-hmm. it's, it's vital. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dan, last question, this, I am going to pull, uh, your, your tech genius on this. So now I'm pulling the, okay, Dan cops, a tech guy. So I wanted to talk about top tools that have helped you. One of the things that really helped is if you're leading the group, use a headset because the sound quality is going to be so much better and people will, will just hear you better. It, it, it really makes a huge difference. And you can get some headsets out there for really, really cheap. You'd be surprised how many are under $30 that also have very, very effective noise canceling features so that if there's background noise happening around you, you're, the people aren't going to hear it. You're not going to get the feedback that you get with, um, with an open microphone. And um, it just, it's just a much better experience. So I would highly recommend that if you're leading the group, try if you can to use a headset. Yeah, $30 investment can make a huge difference. Yeah, it can. Yeah. One of the options that we're going to be looking at this next year, we're trying some conference room technology that we're going to use in our living room. And what that's going to allow us to do is when we move away from this strictly online uh, meetings, we're going to start trying a hybrid. And the the conference room camera, which is a, um, a wide angle camera, so you can sit it in a spot in your living room, it'll capture everybody in the living room and you'll be able to see them. And the microphone is tuned into the human voice pretty well and it picks up picks up voice without as much background noise. And uh, so far we've had, uh, I've tried it with some calls with family and it's worked really well. The camera's decent and uh, and it was, it was regular prices around two hundred dollars, you know. So it's it's kind of on the spending side, but I I got a deal. I know you did on on yours yeah, as we, well. Yeah, so. we got ours for less than a hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna try it tonight at Elders. You know, and I'd be happy if 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 you guys want to talk talk about it offline or whatever. Just grab me at church and ask me, and I can tell you about some of the stuff we've used. If you want to talk about specific technologies, I just don't like over the air. Yeah, yeah. Trying to advocate for any one thing or another. You can email info at fbchurch dot org, and we will link you to Dan. I think of scriptural things like pray for one another, these commands, these one another, pray for one another, encourage one another, speak psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. What do you do to utilize your tech to do those things? We also use WhatsApp as a kind of a a prayer request, uh, instant prayer request. And we had some agreements early on, like we didn't want it to be just, you know, people throwing stuff out there and having frivolous conversation and that sort of thing where people's, uh, you know, apps would be constantly dinging from (laughs) notifications what we really tried to do was uh, say, look, I mean, if we need to, to share something, either it could be a praise, it could be a prayer, 
Um, but let's try to make the, the conversation really meaningful so that we have some, um, some depth to this. And it's worked out really well because we could get into a situation where, you know, maybe a family member had an emergency, a friend had an emergency, you have an emergency, uh, and you just need prayer right away. Send a text really quick to the group, and within minutes, if not seconds, people are responding saying that they're praying. And that's awesome. I yeah. love that. Anything else you think would be beneficial for anybody? Beyond the technology, just having the heart to want to fulfill the Great Commission and to, to live the way that, that God wants us to live. The technology is neither good nor bad. It just is. And it's what we do with it that um, that helps make it either good or bad for us and others. And so so just make sure when we're thinking through all the, the various tech stuff that the main focus is on God because that's where it needs to be. Amen. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. It was great to hear from Dan. Uh, you may not be a particularly techie person, but there is probably somebody in your world who would be really eager to help you. So if you're not creative that way, that's okay. Find some people that are so that you can carry out that mission. The other thing I want to say is that the, the passion that Dan has to care for his people is something that we should all uh, seek to uh, live out in the body life of the church. And I hope you do. hope this inspires you to do that. So thanks for joining us. If you have input, if you have other ideas for podcast episodes, please feel free to give us feedback personally or jot us a note, send us an email, info at fbchurch.org. Thanks for joining us.